Imagine a story that blurs the line between pixels and pavement. A story that's not just a movie, but a testament to the shocking fusion of technology and real-life passion. That's what happened with Jan Martinborough, a young gamer whose passion and gaming expertise turned him into a real-life racing champion. Welcome to Galore Tex. If you're a fan of cars, and especially Formula One racing, then you must have seen or heard about the movie Gran Turismo that brought the racing simulator to the big screen, showcasing Martinborough's story. Let's explore all the technological aspects of the movie, from filming techniques, the car used for shooting, and everything in between. With a budget of $60 million, the movie set out on an ambitious journey to bring the thrill of racing to the big screen. The risk paid off as it roared to success, grossing a whopping $110 million worldwide. Critics had mixed feelings, applauding the direction and heart-pounding racing sequences that left audiences breathless. However, they felt that the writing had room for improvement. The cast included David Harbour, who did a thoroughly engaging performance as a former professional racer turned mechanic, Orlando Bloom as Danny Moore, a marketing executive at Nissan, and Archie Medeque as Jan Martinborough. The shooting was completed in a whirlwind, just seven weeks, and they filmed at quite a number of locations around the world. Starting in Budapest in November 2022, the crew journeyed to locations like the heart-pounding Mount Panorama Circuit in Bathurst, Australia, the legendary Dubai Autodrome, and the Hungaroring, known for the annual Formula One Hungarian Grand Prix. Even the famous Red Bull Ring in Austria played a role. They of course modified and changed the sets to look like some other locations. For example, Budapest morphed into Tokyo, and the Hungaroring took on the appearance of the Circuit de la Sarc. It's one thing watching a high-speed race from the stands or through a camera lens where you're at a safe distance to enjoy all those adrenaline rushes, and another completely different thing to be in the midst of it all. Neil Blomkamp, the director, had that exact idea in his mind. He wanted his movie to be a visceral experience with real cars, genuine racetracks, and heart-stopping stunts. He wanted to make it look very real. So, how do you film a movie filled with practical stunts with cars going 200 miles an hour. Let's discuss the cameras and equipment that helped to capture it all. The director of photography, Jacques Jouffre, had a remarkable approach to capturing the intense racing sequences in the movie. Instead of relying heavily on VFX, he aimed to achieve authenticity and realism in every frame with 26 actual stunt drivers performing in real life. And in fact, the real life Martinborough also assisted with filming the racing choreography, and here you can see how a red Komodo is placed right next to his face to give a first-person perspective shot. The director conveyed the sheer speed of racing by eliminating elements that didn't contribute to the sensation. That's why, if you look closely, there's a very little sky and a lot more tarmac and a lot more side angles in those racing scenes. The other contributing tool was a tracking vehicle fitted with a remote head which was non-stabilized very close to the ground for capturing the tarmac at those high speeds. Those shakes were needed, and the result was a visual filled with energy that had the vibration to make the audience feel the speed. But what truly set the cinematography apart was the innovative use of technology, specifically Sony's Venice 2 camera and the new Rialto 2 camera extension system. To capture the racing sequences, it was essential to place cameras inside the cockpits of real race cars. This was a big challenge to overcome because the last time I checked, race car cockpits are designed for a single driver and there's no room for bulky camera equipment. So Jouffre copied what Claudio Miranda did, who had a faced a similar challenge filming Top Gun Maverick. His team had successfully inserted cameras into modern fighter jet cockpits. So Jouffre adapted this methodology using a Sony Venice 2 and a prototype Rialto 2 extension system. This setup allowed them to separate the camera body from the 8K sensor and lenses, placing the latter inside the race car's cockpits. So three Sony Rialto 2 systems were installed inside the cockpits, one facing the driver, one on the left, and one on the right. This allowed a variety of angles and images that seamlessly complemented footage from external cameras on the track during the editing process. The results were shots that made it look like the driver was in their own universe. It was then the editor's job to transition from the inside of the car to the outside views and deliver that visually stunning and convincing high-speed action. As for the lenses, Jouffre used Light's M0.8, 
and Leica Summilux M still lenses with iris and focus gear. These lenses may be small, but are full frame and f1.4. He also had screw on filter. Now the reason why he chose these lenses was because they have a very small form factor and give a depth to skin tone. Now we can't forget that we aren't dealing with normal conventional cars here, which could be stopped and directed to change direction if a shot wasn't right. These are cars traveling at brain crushing speeds and you can't make them take a round again and again. They had to be really specific as to where the car would end up in a shot and place cameras exactly on the spots around the track, the pit perch, pit box, pit lane, etc. to film all of the angles. The director fought to have 15 cameras placed so that they actually had enough material picked up to work within a single run. Another strategy they embraced was the use of FPV or first person view drone photography. Now, this technique has been in use for sporting events. And because the director had an interest in drone photography, he made use of that to shoot incredible aerial shots by mounting a V-Raptor on a traditional non-FPV drone and filmed by swooping in and circling around the racing cars while they were in action. The movie's lighting strategy was as innovative as the racing itself. To ensure the tracks were brilliantly lit, RE sky panels and cream source vortex 8s were placed in advance. And when it came to the interior of the vehicles, the crew ingeniously rigged two or three Astera Hydra panels inside each car, creating an immersive environment for the actors. Interestingly, they didn't fix any lights on the car's exterior because of safety concerns and the unique shape of the LMP2 race cars, which had round windshields and it would have been impossible to hide all the reflections. So that's all of the physical equipment used for filming. But what about any computer graphics and VFX? You can't forget those, can you? The software Previs played a crucial role in seamlessly integrating stunt driving, special effects, and visual effects for those high octane scenes. Previs is an innovative software that provides some animation for storyboarding. Storyboarding is a graphic representation of how a video will unfold shot by shot. Working hand in hand with the VFX studio, UPP, and three other facilities, the visual effects department extended environments and introduced digital effects from exploding crash debris to vanishing stunt driver pods erasing drones and removing camera rigs from the exterior of vehicles. VFX was used to map animated and glowing lines to the racetracks whenever Martinborough was visualizing the optimal driving path to beat his opponents. Film director Neil Blomkamp said this was done to bring a more virtual and gaming side to the races. Gran Turismo also featured some amazing cars. Since Jan Martinborough's training at the GT Academy was sponsored by Nissan, we get to see some of the Japanese makers' cars like the 370Z GT5 and the GTRS. Then there was a striking chrome gold wrapped Lamborghini Huracan playing the perfect foil to Martinborough's Nissan 370Z GT5. And we also got to see LMP2 and the Porsche 911 GT3 RS the 992. So, did you watch this movie in theaters? What aspect of the movie's storytelling surprised you the most? Let us know down below. Also, check out some of our other movie tech reviews if you loved this video. I hope you enjoyed the video, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more interesting Galore Text videos. Thanks for watching.